Hello everyone, so I've got a slightly unusual, well I guess not that unusual video for this channel today. Today I am going to be talking about, well, a distribution that I've been reviewing, but I've not been reviewing it for the purposes of reviewing it as a distribution, but rather reviewing it for its purposes as a flagship for a desktop environment, that desktop environment of course being Unity, and the distribution being Ubuntu 15.10. So, uh, with Ubuntu 15.10, I used the vanilla version of Unity which came with it, which was 7.3.3. And I've never been a big fan of Unity, and if you have any sort of psychic powers about your person, you're going to realise that this is not going to be a positive review. But every now and then, I want to come back to it and give it another shot. It, to me, has always seemed like a work in progress. And... And that, to me, feels that, that I can't really close the book on it. But I think this review is going to get as close as, as I'm going to get to it. For the uh, the too long don't didn't read version, I really didn't like Unity. It still doesn't feel like a finished, polished desktop environment. It doesn't feel like it is representative of the incredibly um, amazing uh, sort of software uh, feat of engineering behind it. Um, it's... Uh, it doesn't feel complete, it feels clunky, it's buggy, um, and it just isn't a very nice interface. So, let's get on with some of the notes that I've made. I'm just going to read through the notes that I've made and tell you about my experience with Unity. So I've in installed Ubuntu 15 on my main desktop driver. I was going to stare Unity square in the face and, and I was going to be like, I'm going to force myself to like it. I'm going to change my workflow, I'm going to do whatever's necessary, I'm going to change the apps that I use, whatever. I'm going to try my darndest to like Ubuntu 15 and Unity 7.3.3. Okay, so the first set of problems I uh, I had were crash windows that gave me no explicit error and didn't actually obviously or visibly deny me of anything. So every now and then I would get a window that popped up and said, unexpected error has occurred, click OK or click close or whatever. And then, you know, life goes on. No program I was running would crash or anything like that. Um, and this happens now, after a few upgrades, it, it, it went away. But um, it does happen two times after I log in. Um, I get a crash window, and then about 20 seconds later, I'll get a second crash window with no descript error, uh, no you know pointing me in the direction of, of where to find out more. Something has gone wrong, something has crashed, click close, and then carry on. It's a very minor annoyance, but for... Uh, and I usually let things like this go on smaller distributions. But when this is supposed to sort of demonstrate and, and be, you know, your flagship desktop environment where it's supposed to show you how polished and how far Linux on the desktop has come and you've got not just sort of error boxes but particularly, you know, um, meaningless ones at that, it's uh, it's a very bad first impression. And I think that was kind of, you know, that was almost th that early stage. I kind of knew that not much had changed since my last review of Unity. Um, okay, and another, another one, and I think this is actually a deliberate design, but it's one that really bugs me, is uh, having the uh, the launcher on the left-hand side of the, the screen. Now, I actually quite like that, and as someone who pointed out to me um, a while back, uh, it's, it's particularly useful to have launchers on the left side of screens, particularly on laptops, because it's easier to swipe your trackpad to the left than it is to, to, to swipe down. So if you're constantly referring to buttons on the left-hand side of your window, uh, it kind of makes sense that that would be, uh, you know, that that's easier from a trackpad point of view, from a mobile point of view. It also, given that nowadays we seem to be, uh, widescreen monitors seem to be the norm, it does seem that we do have a little bit more screen real estate to spare um, on the x-axis than the y-axis. So it's not the problem of having the launcher on the left-hand side that I dislike. However, when you set it to auto-hide, uh, because the the monitor itself, uh, you know, okay, you know, you can run it on 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 four three aspect ratio monitors and so forth. And there, you know, you might want, you know, it is a sizable uh, launcher. You might want to have it on auto hide. However, the problem I had with the auto hide, and again, this is a small thing, but because you do it so often, it becomes a very regular annoyance. Uh, so it's very small here and there. Um, and, and and on occasion, and and an occasional issue, you could overlook it, but. Um, the way that the launcher um, bounced up or popped into screen 
um, as a result of the auto hide feature was really, really annoying because it's almost like you had to push your mouse beyond the left of the screen into like a theoretical area outside the monitor before the uh, before the launcher would then pop in as a result of the auto hide. It, you couldn't just drift your 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 mouse to the left side of the screen. Um, and thinking that you could would just leave you there waiting for a, for a launcher that was going to appear that was never going to appear. So it almost felt like it was sticky. It had like a sticky uh, auto hide um, along the side, which was uh, which was very, really counterintuitive and one which, even though I kind of got used to a little bit over time, uh, it was never anything that that I you know the second I could get rid of that feature, the the second I could I could set that right, uh, I I would. Um, the online search. Now, this is one that a lot of people had a problem with. Online search being uh, automatically part of the the desktop search um, was was something that a lot of people were in quite a legitimate and quite a justified uproar about. And that was that uh, all the results that you were sending, searching for your desktop applications, were automatically being piped through. Um, I think it was Amazon, and they were getting all of your 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 sort of search history. Uh, which is particularly egregious in my personal viewpoint because first off, it's not obviously said. It's you know it it, it is mentioned here and there, but it is not mentioned. You know you, you, there is no uh, would you, there was no opt in. That's the expression I'm looking for. There's no opt in. Um, there's only an opt out. And and by the time most Ubuntu users, particularly ones that are coming to Linux for the first time, even you know are aware of of or realistically uh, aware of of the information they're giving away. It, it to me it al almost feels like the damage has started being done at that point. Now there's a great website called Fix Ubuntu, which tells you how you can um, stop Amazon basically tracking your desktop searches. But the fact that it's an opt out rather than an opt in feature is something that I really don't like. None of the other Ubuntu variations, none none of the other sort of variants, or, or none of the, the you know your Kubuntu's, your Zubuntu's, your Ubuntu Mates, your Ubuntu Gnomes. Um, None of them have this problem. It's just with the Unity desktop. Um, but again, uh, you know, I wasn't a particular fan of that. So I, I feel that, it, again, it's it's not disappeared. It's not gone away. So so that's definitely a point going against it. Uh, I did have a problem when trying and using the, um, the Unity tweak tool uh, to move the, um, the close, minimize, and maximize buttons from the left to the right, but that never worked out on this particular version of, of Unity, and I'm not really sure why. Again, something that I actually ended up forcing myself to get used to, and I didn't... Um and I didn't mind that, but... Um and also, another... Um thing of the unit the unity interface which i i liked that they improved on is that they actually gave you the option to have the title menus uh inside the title bar whereas uh it used to be the case where if you wanted to access the file edit menus of any of your applications you'd have to go all the way to the top of the screen where there was like this universal menu bar of you know your file edits options preferences at the top but now you can select it so that your title bar when you hover over it gives you that same menu Menu. It's not what I would have chosen. I would have chosen certainly something a lot more um, traditional like Cinnamon or, or KDE or Plasma or whatever it's being called now. But um, uh, but uh, but yeah, that's you know that's something they've changed that I like. Um, the GTK client side uh, decorated apps. Um, they look or the ones at least I tried out, look particularly um, unusual because what they've done is they haven't sort of embraced the GTK3 apps in the way that, you know, the GTK toolkit has or even in the way that it's uh, emulated through, um, you know, XFCE or, or KDE or anything like that. Um, but what they've done is they seem to have forcefully drawn... Um, a Unity window around it, so that they could use the title bar as their f um, fancy little hover over menu um, type thing. Um, but it does look like a GTK3 app inside of a uh, of a Unity window, which uh, doesn't look particularly nice. But it, it functions well enough. But it, again, it's something that I just feel should be brought up. Um, and one thing I particularly like, it says here in my notes, is that the App Store. I do like the Ubuntu App Store now. Um, I believe it has been relayed that the Ubuntu App Store is being ditched in the latest version of Ubuntu for the GNOME Store, or GNOME Store, however you want to pronounce it. Again, another very good App Store. Uh, if it looks like they're just deferring to something upstream because upstream is better, have at it. That's a great, great. Um, but I did 
quite like the Ubuntu App Store. It seemed like pretty user friendly for um, for newbies coming over. It's nowhere near as good as the Ubuntu Mate Boutique uh, software boutique. Uh, which was a great sort of um, way to get started. Uh, this was a little bit more like a, a traditional package manager, but um, just with a nicer front end, which is really what uh, what distributions really benefit from. I think it's sort of lacking in a lot of newbie-friendly distributions, but I really did like it there. One of the things that did take me a while to get used to, and I really don't like, was the mouse acceleration in Unity. Um, the mouse acceleration in Unity... Uh, felt like, uh, and I didn't find a way to turn this off. I'm sure there could have been config files or, or whatever that I could have trudged through to actually get it to work. Um, but I was really looking at Unity as, uh, you know, I was sort of reviewing it. I'm sort of judging it on its, on on a lot of its default settings and also on a lot of its usability settings, which kind of I'm taking to mean that if a uh, if an intermediate or novice user can't do this, then I'm going to live with it as if they couldn't do, you know, as if they couldn't solve it, or as, you know, as if it was a uh, system default and um and the mouse acceleration sort of to me fell under this category and w having two monitors side by side uh with a trackable often meant that you'd I'd sort of move the mouse from left to the right really quickly and uh and it's the the mouse acceleration just sort of made it so that I kept overshooting um stuff that I was, I was you know buttons that I was trying to click on from any distance away simply because of how uh, how I'm, you know, how I'm not used to, to mouse acceleration, and how it just seemed to get in the way more than actually help in any meaningful way, um, because there, like mouse acceleration is never really that much of a problem on a on a trackable mouse, uh, which is what I tend to prefer to use, um, and across two monitors again, still not a problem. But mouse acceleration seemed to think that it was helping me by making my mouse go faster from one side of the screen to the other when I didn't really want it to. So. Um, so the mouse acceleration, yeah, that one really bothered me as well. Um, uh, the close buttons and the minimize and maximize buttons, they were in a, an ideal place as well. They were in the top left, uh, which was, again, it was a brave thing to, to, uh, to design, uh, it was a brave design decision to make on behalf of, uh, Ubuntu. Uh, however, the, it seems perilously close to, like, the menu button. Uh, and the file button, and it seemed like all these rather important buttons were were perilously close together. And one, you know, on one or two occasions, I ended up closing a window I didn't want to close simply because I was because the mouse acceleration made me overshoot the file button. Um, so uh, again, uh, I didn't manage to get away with changing that in the Unity tweak tool. Uh, for some reason, it just wouldn't let me um, move the the close buttons over across to the right hand side of the windows. That could very well have been just as a result of, of, of a bug or something that I needed to wait through to get fixed or, or whatever. But for some reason, I set that settings and it it just didn't save for, for one reason or another. So um, so I ended up forcing myself to get used to it. And I sort of did as time went on. But it's again, it's still something that's not ideal. It's still, still something uh, problematic there. Uh, another problem I had was the top menu bar, which has decided to span all of my monitors. Um doesn't layer very well with full screen windows. So if I'm watching a um, a film or a TV show or something on monitor two, uh, which doesn't have the launchers or, or or anything like that, it just has the 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 task bar at the top, and I'm working on a project on 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 you know on my other monitor, uh, the um, the task bar will then come above the full screen on the uh, on the monitor where I was full screen in my TV show or film or whatever. Um, Again, not a massive problem, but it was it's it's something that I I feel that a polished uh, desktop environment should do. So um, yeah, when you when your sort of top menu bar overlaps the your full screen window, if you're doing something, you know, if you lose focus or whatever, that's uh, a bit of a problem. Uh, oh, another problem which I really was a bit taken aback by was that Steam wouldn't install through the Unity App Center, which. Um, Considering that I would imagine a lot of people's first port of call from the Unity App Center would be to get the Steam um, client up and running, that one was uh, was was a bit glaring. It was uh, easy rem easy to remedy. It was simply look it up in on on the you know I just uh, installed it through the command line, which was apt search Steam, and then I looked for the relevant package which Steam is selling itself as, and then I just did apt get install Steam colon i three eight six I think was the package. Um, and it was uh, it was hunky dory installed in one, no problems there. But uh, 
but uh, but for people coming over to the distribution, I think that that might have you know that might have been a bit of a concern. Uh, a quick Google search would have fixed it, but you know you know Ubuntu and Unity are the flagship of what Linux on the desktop is these days, and whereas a lot of the sort of the issues that I'm raising might seem a little cosmetic, they might seem a little minor. Couple them with the fact that they all sort of add up over time. Um, I'm also concerned that if this is the first impression that a lot of Linux users uh, or a lot of people new to Linux are getting, um, it sort of it sort of concerns me because I you know I seem to see a, um, sort of the other variants of Ubuntu um, sort of succeeding where where Unity just just seems to be lagging behind. Um, and I think the 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 final point that I'm going to lay uh, that I'm going to land down here is the I found that if you had multiple say for example browser windows it would use the one launcher button and you would click on that launcher button and it would display all your browser windows or all the windows you have for the the specific program uh, and I found that to be quite unresponsive sometimes I'd have to click on it once and then wait a few seconds sometimes I'd have to click on it and then I click on it again, and then that would that would seem to do the trick. Um, but it didn't seem as as fast and responsive as XFCE or the Plasma Desktop or even uh, GNOME. So that's about my uh, review of Unity. Um, I apologise for it effectively being a rather ranty and negative review. I never like doing negative reviews, um, especially you know in the free software world where we're all we're all on the same side and we're all sort of fighting for the the same same goals for the most part. Uh, and it's you know it's it's free and readily available software and um, you know and the source code is there and, and and you know there's plenty of derivatives about and all that kind of stuff. But um, and and that's why I sort of keep these videos as much to a minimum as possible. But man, Unity is a trial. You know, it's a real trial. I. I I would uh, I I am not going to be using it again anytime soon. That's all I can say about it. I know that the majority of people on this channel also have a dislike for Unity as well, uh, but I also know that there are a number of people who who seem to like it. And if you like it, then then I'm glad. <laughs> I really am. Um, but but I cannot get on board. Um, I really can't. Um, I gotta say, Ubuntu fifteen ten, the parts that weren't Unity. Um, I mean, it didn't seem like the worst. You know, it seemed like a pretty solid underlying distribution, and the variants: Kubuntu, Zubuntu, uh, Ubuntu Mate, Ubuntu GNOME. Uh, you know, I've tried these distributions over the last few years, and and for the most part, I'm really, really quite impressed with them. Um, I feel that uh, when it comes to sort of newbies on Ubuntu based distributions. I'm going to be favouring um, the 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 line of of sticking with the long term support releases. Um, I certainly feel that there's a lot more stability in in the long term support releases. I I, I certainly feel that uh, the the that would be the 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 the, the distributions that I'd recommend. Um, and not necessarily just because of stability, although I do notice that there is a marked stability between the long-term support releases and then the intermittent ones. Um, but more specifically is once you fix a problem on a long-term support release of Ubuntu, it's fixed for, you know, the two to five years uh, until the uh, until the next long-term support release comes along or uh, until your support runs out. So it certainly makes sense from that standpoint. And Linux Mint, um, who have been doing some pretty fantastic work lately, um, over their past uh, past few releases, um, have definitely shown that there is a lot of value to be had in the long term support bases of Ubuntu, and I'm going to be very excited to see the latest um, full release of Linux Mint this year, and I'll certainly be reviewing that. Um, but uh, but I decided that I was going to review Unity um, simply because um, I don't really there aren't really any burning distributions uh, for me to to spend any time reviewing until the full versions of Ubuntu uh, 16.04 comes out. Um, and I'm probably only going to give a, like a demonstration of the uh, the, the vanilla Unity uh, layout, and I'm probably going to focus more on some of the Ubuntu variants because they're certainly, uh, in my opinion, sort of more promising and more exciting.
So thank you for making it this far into the video. Um, for those of you that don't know, this channel actually has a subreddit, which I will of course link to down in the description, chriswaredigital.reddit.com. Uh, it's where I post links to like interesting apps or interesting online services or interesting articles or whatever. And uh, any of you guys are also more than welcome to do so. Um, it's not a particularly big or sort of like um, heavily frequented subreddit, but I'd like it to... to uh, to turn into something because Reddit, of course, is one of the very few social media platforms that uh, is open source. And it's also one of those social media platforms that doesn't push the concept of getting as many followers and subscribers down your throat as possible. Uh, it's, it's, an, it's, a, it's a social media platform for those that favors those that want to engage rather than the more sort of marketing based way of getting your message out there. And it's quite nice. I kind of like that. It's, it's a little less... Uh, it's a little less full on, unlike other uh, social networks. I also have a Twitter and do live streams sometimes. So if you want to know when I'm live streaming about, um, my Twitter is a good place. And I'll, of course, link that down in the description below. Thank you very much for watching and um, listening, whatever. Uh, and until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.